Well, I'm Dr. Riaz Bashir. I'm a professor of medicine at Temple University Hospital in Philadelphia. Uh, I run the vascular and endovascular program here at the university hospital. So the rescue study was an investigational device exemption study of the Bashir endovascular catheter uh, in patients with acute intermediate risk PE. Uh, so these patients were not high risk, they were intermediate risk PE patients. And uh, the key eligibility criteria was that they had to have symptoms within 14 days. So they are acute PE patients. And their right ventricle had to be dilated with an RVLV ratio of greater than 0.9. Now, we excluded patients with COVID because the study was going on during the pandemic. So we excluded patients with COVID. We excluded patients who had any intracranial pathologies or any uh, active bleeding. So obviously, we didn't want to give them any thrombolytics. So these were our key eligibility and exclusion criteria for the rescue study. Our primary endpoint of the study was uh, improvement in RVLV ratio at 48 hours using a CT scan. Uh, and our key sa primary safety endpoint was major bleeding rates and major adverse events related to the device. And our key secondary safety endpoint was uh, reduction in pulmonary artery obstruction at 48 hours on a CT scan based on what's called a refined modified Miller index, which measures the obstruction in pulmonary arteries uh, in these patients with pulmonary embolism. The main finding, the primary endpoint was reduced. The RVLV ratio was reduced by 33%, which is more than what we have seen with 100 milligrams of TPA. Uh, our primary safety endpoint of major bleeding and de device-related adverse events was seen in one patient, so 0.9%. It's been one of the safest uh, safety profile of any device used so far in pulmonary embolism. And our secondary efficacy endpoint of re reduction in pulmonary artery obstruction was seen in 35.9% of patients. So uh, that is, again, we, you know, the 100 milligrams of TPA on an average would give 22% reduction in pulmonary artery obstruction. And now with this form of therapy, we were able to achieve 36%. So uh, that was a significant improvement on, on currently available uh, treatments that we have. So the most important question in this space uh, is how, uh, how much improvement can we achieve by actually injecting these drugs directly into the thrombus, what's called catheter-directed thrombolysis. Is catheter-directed thrombolysis better than just giving anticoagulation to these patients who have intermediate risk PE? So we don't know the answer to that question. I think the technology has matured enough and we have enough data now based on these prospective controlled studies that we can randomize patients to anticoagulation alone versus catheter-directed thrombolysis in patients with intermediate risk PE. And I think that's the study that is really needed to, to change the guidelines to, to advance the field of treatment of intermediate risk pulmonary embolism. But in high-risk pulmonary embolism, the most important thing now is to, is to do a randomized trial of comparing this therapy to systemic and, uh, thrombolysis, where you give full-dose thrombolysis. And, and again, I think the, the technology has evolved enough that we can actually be able to accomplish this now. So those are the next future steps in this, in this field.